So, yeah, let's start and uh, with small disclaimer that uh, unfortunately this is not a theoretical story, so you won't hear about technologies, best principles, best practices, or how to connect your particular gadgets and together and make them even more smarter. This is practical story about experience, what I have done over several last years. And uh, this is the best slide I saw, and uh, those who have more gadgets at home, these five, maybe someone has even ten, I don't know how many of those I have, and you, I guess, are familiar with problems there, that every manufacturer is offering his own application, they are not talking each to other, maybe in best case some box with Google, box with Alex, and that's it. More or less you are just having multiples of some apps on your phone to manage all that zoo. And of course you have just the choice, either you continue using those uh, applications or you try to integrate them. And uh, yeah, there is joke in this industry, oh there is problem, we have already 10 protocols, how devices are talking, let's fix it, let's make 11. And that's unfortunately the case here. And yeah, let's start with the introduction as always, how I started it all. And uh, started, I assume, as many of you, just by building some temperature sensor, putting it on the balcony and trying to get something working. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. After several years, it just died. Those who are playing with these ESP chips, you know that that could be this hardware issue that is just committing suicide at some point. That happened with me as well. Then I needed to do some grow light toggling and there is just choice either this mechanical timer from any shop or do some smarter things and buy something from Aliexpress uh, that was recommended by colleague at the time and uh, yeah Aliexpress won and I got my first smart device at home and uh, actually it's fun uh, I know that these are dying from my previous lecture about the same topic. Colleagues said that they have those dead as well. Mine are still alive, and but just repurposed for other tasks. And finally, I got some of these IKEA trad free lights in uh, problem places when I just had electricity without the ability to put some switches on the wall at that time. And they worked just ideally without an issue, so this started to grow and grow and grow. At some point I just discovered that I'm stuck and I can't do anything more. And at this time I started to imagine, hey guys, what's happening? Why I do have all those multiple applications? Yeah, at that time there was some iRobot also crawling around the apartment and so on. Maybe I can do some, uh, somehow join those together. And I defined some points for myself and that I definitely, yeah, want some offline self-hosted solutions that's working at home no clouds but you can use clouds for some informational services independent from hardware manufacturers and software manufacturers so just to avoid some lock-ins and i can easily change my mind at any point in future these are my goals for those who are interested maybe you are building something similar it could be something different maybe it's cloud only maybe Everything's fine. These are my goals as I'm talking about my experience. And uh, yeah, I had some Raspberry Pi lying around, so I decided to run everything there. I was playing with MQTT protocol at that time already, the first <coughs> device you saw in picture. And uh, yeah, this is how I selected and what to do there. Uh, most important part is maybe this third point because it's hard to integrate things that uh, are not talking to other things. So you either you choose some open source or with open protocols or something similar. Can I have a small question? Of course. Maybe you can say it, uh, how many years ago it was? Five, six, at last. Yeah, if any has questions, just raise your hand. Uh, we have a QA answer <laughs> session at the end, but yeah, if someone has some comments or whatever. Raise your hand, ask, and uh, yeah, if later you have any comments, just come and we can talk. Okay, then let's continue and uh, let's start with some ugly picture about kind of complete architecture, what I was or have built over the years. So nice white picture, uh, you can already see that there are three connectivity technologies. 
everything working together. I have one Raspberry Pi Zero that's actually already upgraded to Raspberry Two Zero. Uh, but no sense of that upgrade. I can already recommend from smart home perspective they are about the same. Uh, another upgrade I started with Raspberry Pi One. Uh, that upgrade was needed because Raspberry Pi One was uh, slow. Let's say it that way. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of common uh, how it was built. And now let's go case by case about how it works together and why those devices. So yeah, all through all three data transfer technologies. So first one, Zigbee. Uh, I assume someone has already heard this magical keyword and someone may be already using it even without knowing that it's Zigbee. For example, IKEA is in Zigbee network, uh, Philips Hue is in the uh, Zigbee network, so technically you can be already using it. Invented, you can see already in 2004, improved in 2006, and actually since that 2006, this explosion happened because it's 2006 introduced some kind of standard how those devices to talk to each other. Uh, as I have very little time, yeah, I won't explain, but if you are interested, just come and I will give you that. Uh, and, yeah, what I have at home, this is a real map uh, from Zigbee to MQTT software, a real picture that I took some time ago. And uh, from that perspective, uh, there are three rows, coordinators can the center for that network, router is forwarding traffic to other end devices, and, but router can also perform some function. And uh, from this kind of standard, what's uh, in this industry, usually routers are those devices that have power, permanent power, and devices are those that are running on batteries. And from this map, those blue are technically routers, you can recognize those are bulbs, and those buttons are end devices on batteries, those are in green. So this is just Zigbee network. Next, I have some Bluetooth low energy devices. It's also from history invented some time ago. Uh, technically, it is different from uh, Bluetooth regular, but it can coexist. And uh, I'm using those in two ways. One is advertising packets. This device is just broadcasting from time to time. And another is this uh, generic attributes that I'm reading explicitly and trying to get data out of the device. And last one technology is Wi-Fi. The same Wi-Fi that I assume every, uh, not everyone's using laptops now, uh, some phones, whatever device, exactly the same Wi-Fi. And this explosion happened in 2014 when these ASP01 chips appeared. This is a real photo on the left. And uh, yeah, now those chips, of course, chips have evolved. There's ASP32. And uh, I would guess that absolute majority of products that are currently running on Wi-Fi is using one of those chips. And not all, there exist others, but this is absolute majority. For example, that Sonoff that I mentioned before, Sonoff company is built kind of only on those ASP chips. Technically, Sonoff was just making these end user friendly. And that's all what this company is actually doing. Uh, how it all goes <laughs> together, kind of because it all needs some software. As I mentioned before, MQTT, it's central, it's open source, it's very easy to use. I'm using this Mosquito software. Uh, yeah, and you can use it very simple to install, just install. Uh, actually, to start using configuration is not needed, but I'm, uh, I configure this persistence. But for home use, I'm not using any encryption authentication because it also can be used, maybe some commercial purpose or, or industrial, you of course will need this encryption. Uh, but for home use, I don't see fit. And uh, yeah, as this is kind of central for data. Then next thing is this Zigbee to MQTT, as I mentioned, the logo is below, and this is kind of software for that central coordinator that's holding all this Zigbee device together. It's software for that uh, coordinator, coordinator's kind of device, but you, it needs also software. And this is the one I'm using. You can see in brackets also IKEA fix. Uh, those who I 
I don't know, has anyone actually tried IKEA uh, those devices, but without IKEA having, uh, let's say, the same Zigbee to improve the data or whatever? No, I've tried with uh, Philips Hub, it's working. It's, it's working, but with IKEA? IKEA working with Philips Hub. Ah, no, no. Have you tried using IKEA without IKEA Hub? No. Okay. Those who will try, there is no issue in, uh, you will see in forums if you would try to, that, uh, ah, I have no example, but there is bulb you can turn on off and there is colors, you can change it to more blue, more yellow and so on. And it's no issue that this color changing is something proprietary that's not in standard. And as you go away from IKEA and go to some open source, this color switching just stops working and you can't do anything there. And uh, the temp temperature can can be changed though. Before, yes, with IKEA official. No, it's uh, two type of lamps, uh, changing temperature and changing color. It's different things. Uh, it's temperature, I think it's called. The temperature just uh, white, white and warm. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and as soon as uh, you go uh, away from IKEA, this application and IKEA hub, this functionality is lost. I don't know why forums and internet suggesting a lot of things just create some custom groups, create some custom device. I tried some failed, ah, I said I'm a developer, I can do it in software. So I wrote IKEA fix that's just listening to MQTT, I'm just intercepting those uh, button presses and doing from software command to change those colors. Uh, not colors, but temperature. So it can be done, but, uh, and eventually I'm thinking just to convert it to this uh, software plugin, so it's not need for extra, extra, process and raspberry. Uh, and last thing is this Bluetooth low energy to MQTT. As I said, everything is going through MQTT. And uh, for that, Bluetooth low energy also need a conversion. And I created this software myself, as you see, 100% self-written, based just on various protocols, reverse engineering found on the internet and so on. Yes, there are a lot of things available on GitHub, for example, when one device is being decoded, another device is being decoded, but they somehow think exclusively only. As I was thinking more broadly, how to unite all those devices together, so this ready-to-use software was not really for me. Are, you, are your software written like IKEA Dix and this are open source? Or? Uh, I will mention later, I have a plan to put this in open source. It's currently not, because I have some still plans in my mind what to do. But at that point, I assume it will be put in open source. Uh, but of course, yeah, anyone doing something like that, uh, you can do also some research and be ready to investigate. And yeah, the last thing, UI, uh, kind of most important thing, how it works and what uh, you actually interfacing with. I tried and actually tested by myself all those three kind of main open source projects that are available in the internet uh, with various results. I will explain a bit later. And uh, yeah, and those assumptions was that running on a Raspberry Pi using MQTT data. And at some point, very quickly, I just realized I also need mobile app, but that's not an issue because all those three have corresponding mobile apps. Started with Doma Doma Pits. I actually don't know how it spells. Uh, yeah, you can get some also in links and comparisons. Uh, unfortunately, those are not always true. Super easy to install, super lightweight, running on Raspberry without an issue. Unfortunately, I was uh, unable to connect to, to MQTT at all. I don't know. Followed instructions, it just refused to connect. I don't know. Others had no though, issue, so I assume either I'm idiot. That can be, okay, that's I assume uh, this community is very welcome, but I just switch it to another uh, attempt. Next, I tried OpenHub. Uh, it was better. I got it connected to MQTT, but uh, there was problem, yeah, I couldn't map those data because it was very kind of complicated configuration and usual how to map JSON to those I think it was called things in open hub terminology, so something was not working well for me. Uh, here is this disclaimer, maybe I just targeted or got this very wrong time, actually, who asked about years. If you know when this happened, this open hub version switch, then you will know when I started, at some one or two years ago, so 
uh, yeah. So I got in very unfortunate time when they had this radical project change and because of that none of instructions, documentations, YouTube videos, nothing was just not working anymore because OpenHub 3 was radically different from OpenHub 2. As last one I tried Home Assistant. Uh, yeah, there were better uh, results. I got it connected to MQTT. Uh, managed to get those data about a bit later. Uh, and what is more or less working? Yeah, this is uh, when compared to Domotic's both uh, Home Assistant and Open Hub are very more resource hungry. It's very hard to run all those on Raspberry, but it can be done, especially uh, of course on later. But I tried all this on Raspberry One, so it can also be run on Raspberry One. And also, disclaimer I selected Home Assistant just because I got it working. I'm not telling at all that this is best for this case. So, any of you trying something else, you are welcome to try something else. I'm absolutely not recommending to use. Uh, yeah, what's the problem? I got it working. Yeah, that's the main point. Uh, very nice configuration options, some lot of lots of integrations available, uh, but unfortunately very, very counterintuitive and complex configuration very hard to add devices if you are not using those ready to use integrations and uh, very inefficient UI you will see in a moment and with that uh, Bluetooth uh, to MQTT uh, code I wrote actually I wrote automated home assistant integration just to avoid that manual nightmare with adding all those devices to the uh, home assistant so enough words let's do some demo Unfortunately, it's very complicated to do demo about smart home when you are not at home. So I did small meeting with myself and recorded the demo. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is a really short demo of smart home what I actually have built. So few devices for practical demo. First one, IKEA bulb. It uh, just looks like a regular bulb, but it's actually smart RGB bulb. And in a moment, I will show you how it really works. I'm currently putting it into electricity. The next thing is Philips Hue uh, motion sensor, but I'm using it mostly for light sensing, as it also gives you looks readings about actual light, not only movement. And third one is Ruvitag temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, uh, and movement. You can also use for various purposes. Now I'll switch screen. And now you should see Home Assistant UI. Uh, specially uh, purpose build this dashboard, and you can immediately see how efficient it is. But to just be quick about this Ruby tag, Nothing fancy, just temperature reading here. That's it. It's hard to show practical demo with temperature. Next is this thing. Uh, it's, as I said, motion sensor, but it also gives light readings. And I have moved light readings here on top right screen. And you can show that's currently showing just change to 2000. There is window in that direction because and lights coming in. I'll cover with my finger this light sensor, and you'll see in a moment. It will, you see it radically drop down. It, it's dark, it's evening there. I'm moving finger off and it should switch back to that huge reading. Yeah, you see it there. Last thing is this, as I promised, IKEA bulb. You can control it fully here. You can change brightness, you can start. Uh, it will be very hard to see it on camera. I'll put close to my face so you can see a reflection on my face how that's actually working. So we'll start with turning on. And as I said, it's RGB bulb. So you can actually switch to any light you would like to. You see blue, green. You can also change brightness. So it's how it's working. Now I'm switching it off and uh, short walkthrough UI. This is default Home Assistant UI. It's managing by itself and you can immediately see that huge amount of devices I have, but also at the same time that this dashboard is actually unusable. You can't imagine, you can't navigate, you can't find data you need. 
because of that I have built some small oriented for mobile because mobile applications actually using exactly the same UI just squeezed into a phone screen. The same inefficiency, the same huge icons you can see kind of how big is this bulb switch. Some monitoring data mostly yeah, used for monitoring and maybe some uh, also quick actions. Also I'll show you automations, one automation, for example, I have monitoring on gas heating. So that's here and I have put a plug, smart plug with power monitoring there on gas heating. So, and I have discord pattern when this gas heating boiler has hang and it's not heating anymore. And I have discord uh, this pattern, it's visible here. So when this energy has in that range and the parent power that range and current is that and then do some actions. Here is again repeated with and because for those triggers each of those is independent trigger and one can trigger and the rest is not triggered. And for that to be true I am adding and conditions so checking all those again and then it's action just waiting for some time checking condition again, sending modification, uh, notification to my phone. Yeah, you see UI is it even not supporting wall uh, possibilities that's possible there. And then I'm just triggering uh, restart of power uh, by heating, by turning off and on this power plug. You can see in advanced configuration that it's YAML file. Uh, you can of course learn what all those keys means and how to put those together because those are actually keywords you need to obey otherwise it won't work and yeah it's kind of more efficient but it's very 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 complex to actually learn this one so that's it thanks and let's continue yep we are in the correct spot so uh problems with home assistant uh First thing is data storage. I don't know why they are using data storage, they are using a SQL database, but it's doing a very, very inefficient way. At some point, I think a year ago or what, they did some radical project change, it got better, but it's still, <coughs> still wrong and still very inefficient. And because of that, it's hard to store data long, for very longer periods. Uh, another problem is public access, that this project is just assuming that you will have public access to that instance, otherwise your uh, app on your smartphone won't work even in that case, and yeah, that can be done, but maybe not, not for everyone. And yeah, also a very inconsistent project, because of that you can't even put some extra security on, on top of that UI. Uh, short list of devices what you have you know, uh, saw in that huge default <coughs> dashboard and some yeah grouped by technologies okay, okay. Uh, so from zigbee as i mentioned i have a lot of those ikea traffic devices works like charm without an issue it can be used of course with a native this hub and smart home uh, application but it can also be used with third party as i'm doing also, I'm using, as I uh, shown, this Philips Hue, and I have also some contact sensors from Sonoff. Sonoff also has these Bluetooth devices, but sorry, Zigbee devices, but of course they are less than uh, Wi-Fi. Bluetooth Low Energy, Ruvitag, both Simple and Pro. I have both just for testing, mainly using those simple ones. Pro are laying on my desk. Also, those tel uh, Teltonica, they are sold in Latvia as Teltonica, uh, RHD. Uh, it's interesting uh, because they are white, la white label, this Evola Innovation France manufacturer. Teltonica is not even hiding it. If you want to configure, just go to Teltonic website, it will show you, just download the Innovation configuration tool and do it. But they are still selling it as those as Teltonica. Uh, last thing are those flower sensors. Uh, it's monitoring humidity, micro elements, whatever else. Uh, this is interesting if you would try to find something in AliExpress. They are sold out. 
by HHCC or Xiaomi. Both names work, and both names you will find exactly the same device, about exactly the same price, called Flower Care. Uh, I do not care either, it's H HCC and uh, Xiaomi is just buying and putting their labels, or Xiaomi is the uh, kind of true inventor, and those are just clones, have no clue, they work without a problem. Uh, last things are Wi-Fi. As I said, some smart plugs, uh, still the same Sonoff, uh, and here is very important that both, uh, not both, but all of them are flushed open source. Those Atom plugs that's on top, that's coming already from factory, you can already choose either you're using Tasmota firmware or using this ASP home. I've selected Tasmota. Sonoffs are all reflashed, Tasmota <coughs> firmware, they are no Chinese roots anymore. Shelly are really nice, uh, Croatia, something in Europe, manufacturer. They are way more expensive than Sonoff, but on Black Friday you can get those for really nice prices. And they have this uh, power meter, this clamp meter that you do not need to put in line, but just put on your existing wire and read uh, what the electricity is there uh, flowing. Old iRobot, and this is. Uh, and technically it's called M5 paper, but technically SP32 is AX screen. We'll show you later why I need that one. And some, uh, some OSMC, it's Media Center, TV. TV is kind of being recognized, but control does not work. I do not care, the remote works. UPS and printer, all of those are working out of the box with Home Assistant. Uh, how to add new device? Uh, depends on technology using for connection. Zigbee is just being connected to this Zigbee network with Zigbee to MQTT. Bluetooth is uh, this Bluetooth Low Energy ECI yeah, need to configure via manually add the configuration file that is also being recognized. Wi Fi connecting to MQTT to existing Wi Fi. And in other cases, just try to use integrations. For example, that UPS is using via integration with serial port. But otherwise, yeah, you just need to address it case by case. Uh, and as I said before, for this Bluetooth uh, to MQTT, I wrote automated integration, so it works kind of similar to this Wi-Fi. So you just add device configuration, it magically appears in home system. That's an important point because otherwise it's, it's very hard to always do that YAML configuration by hand. So, yeah, I'm not done. I still have things to do. I have great plans, of course, I think it's so. Uh, and, yeah, first thing, I'm currently working on this kind of meter consumption. Already there is Raspberry Pi Zero with uh, infrared camera and infrared LEDs doing photos, that's a real photo of my water meter uh, doing regular photos to learn some AI and yeah, send it over to MQTT. Later I, I will know how to handle it. These things are done, these are not done yet. Uh, next thing, as I mentioned, that I would like still to improve this Bluetooth uh, to MQTT and I want to introduce mesh technology <coughs> uh, because if I have multiple of those readers, multiple Raspberry Pis, uh, then it's uh, hard to understand because it's radio, it's my, uh, my waves and so on, it's physics. You know physics is hard. Uh, but uh, it's hard to understand which one of those are actually better uh, readers for a particular device. And because of that, yeah, I would like to introduce this mesh functionality is that you do configuration one spot and this configuration is being broadcasted to all devices and devices them them themselves do election which is best reader for a particular sensor. So at some point that will be done. When it will be done, as I said, yeah, it will be I, I think it will be put in open source. I hope it will, I will think the same at when I will finish. Who knows? Uh, would like to introduce also and try to test the new sensors, either the same sensors but with better technology, to measure new measurements and new things because those playing with some, let's say, motion sensors, you know, there's issue that people, for example, person standing 
without movement and it just turns off light because there is no movement, it's motion sensor. That's being promised uh, fix by those present sensors. Actually, this one, Akara, I have already bought about two weeks ago. Discovered there is a lot of configuration, I'm still learning to use it. So, yeah, let's hope, uh, not hope. I think it will be working in very soon time. And I think best section, of course, because what could be better than other failures? <coughs> Maybe you mentioned that I'm not mentioning this very popular 433 megahertz technology. I tried it, but failed. So first thing I tried to use all the same on eBay or AliExpress available modules. Uh, yeah, unfortunately failed. I got those working, I learned how to read remote codes, how to replace those back. It's uh, very simple actually to connect those to Raspberry. Uh, but unfortunately I discovered that actual transmission range is about 10 centimeters. It's very hard to do a smart home in 10 centimeters distance. Okay, one filer. What to do next? I still would like to introduce this 443 megahertz. I bought it ready to use the device. What could go wrong? And when I open it to reflash it to Tosmota, they mentioned open source firmware, not Chinese crap. I discovered that actually this is how it should look like. And this is how it actually was looking like. And um, yeah, it turns out that manufacturers are not playing fair. Uh, they are just changing device internals completely without warning and still keeping the same case and selling it under exactly the same name. And what you actually get, it's only after you open the case and are surprised. So just be ready for surprise. Actually, the same who are uh, the same is not so. Not to say son of our only ones, the same is very familiar case, those who are older will remember kind of beginnings of this internet, this Linksys via WRTG 34 router issue when they changed, yes. So is it actually worse or it's just different components? Uh, it's worse in a way that you can't flash it to Tasmota. You can flash, but it won't work because there is a radio module is another one and it just is not being uh, I assume at some point people will reverse engineer and will discover how it works. But at this point it's not done yet. So it can be flashed to the smota, but it won't work in this radio transmission. It's getting something, but you can't do any real functionality. But maybe you are lucky if you are buying, maybe you will let this one. Who knows it's lottery. Uh, last thing, yeah, I mentioned it, Raspberry, so you will understand I'm using Raspberry a lot and I crashed into issue with Raspberry. What could go wrong with Raspberry? It's rock solid, known for years. And it turns out for Model 3, they have uh, optimized some tracks on PCB and Bluetooth is actually unstable. Those who have Raspberries at home, just do a process list and check either you have this HCI attached, it's the Bluetooth driver, either you have flow or no flow. It recognizes by itself which model it has actually <coughs> in hardware. But you from process list you can immediately see which either you have problem or not. In case you have this no flow, it's software kind of control software controlled and under heavy CPU loads, that's not so hard to achieve on Raspberry. Uh, it just gets unstable. Some I think I once got kernel panic as well, but otherwise it just random crashes, process not working, Bluetooth packets not coming up and just and the log is full with red messages. So be just familiar that sometimes you crash kind of with known issues for years, sorry, for known technologies for years, but still there are some interesting technologies. And yeah, some devices also. I tried, uh, it's very hard to see, uh, no neutral switch because as in all, all departments there are no wires in every switch, so I just attempted to install this no neutral switch. It was kind of working, but just lights, lights were strobing, so mm, not really. No thanks, so this is just laying in shelf. And these IKEA blinds, still the same trad free ecosystem, but at some point, very, let's say, rear but random case, they just stopped working. No remote, no application, nothing. And then, let's say, minute passes and working as nothing has happened. What to do, I don't know, but otherwise I like them, so I just keep them using. 
how you updating software of devices? Uh, so like here, for example. For example, for Kia, bulbs and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, uh, this Zigbee to MQTTA has already built in this uh, over their firmware, so they're checking their servers, pulling firmware and pushing to device. So everything okay, you have up to date IKEA firmware, yeah? Yep, from mm -hmm. third party. I don't know if he, uh, I don't know if IKEA knows this, <laughs> and if they are happy, but it just works. Uh, and some, as I mentioned before, problems with those home assistant. Was there. so I also uh, this Zigbee to MQTT is not the only one. There is official Zigbee integration for home assistant. I uh, tried initially, of course, to use this one, but it just. I don't know, for me it was very, very problematic. And uh, there is a nice feature for uh, uh, Zigbee called Bind that actually if that coordinator kind of network goes down and if you have configured Bind from, let's say, switch to bulb, even if network goes down, they can talk directly without coordinator. And this Bind functionality was very problematic to configure in this Zigbee home system. Another thing is this try to attempt uh, PlayStation 4 integration out of the box as you can read segmentation fault in Python. Yay, success! But this is not a really problem home assistant, it's just showing what I said before. Very, very kind of green project, we can say in this way, very inconsistent and they're not even testing their own shop integrations for some problems. So, yeah, not always really useful. We are coming to end now and waving so we can continue. So, what to suggest to others, you, all of you who would like to try something similar. So, let's start with some philosophy. So, why is the hell I'm doing all of this? Because it takes a lot, a lot of time. So, if you have those who did not raise your hand on the second question, who had only, let's say, one, two, three, four uh, things at home, maybe it's not worth it. If you just will need to plug uh, one bulb or that's it, just go with it. If you would like to do something, then maybe it's better to use some of these big manufacturers. And only when you are not re uh, kind of not happy with them, when you crash into some limitations and you would like to do more research, more investigation, more learning, reading and digging for problems, then yeah, only then go to this DIY way. Otherwise, maybe it's not worse because it takes a lot and a lot, a lot of time. As, as I said in disclaimer, the beginning, some questions maybe are not answered, and not researched because just a lot of time. What to do if you are not developers? Today we are in developers club. I assume this is not a relevant question, but just in case, who knows who have joined today? So yeah, it's not a requirement to do smart home DIY way if you are not developer. In that case, you just won't be able to kind of evaluate some crap found in GitHub, some ready to use those projects. If it's crashing, no way. Just go for forums and look what other people are saying, and you will. It will be very hard for you to get answers if you can't really read that code. But it can be done. Ease of use. So, what manufacturers say, manuf manufacturers are telling, just use your phone first. Like, needed to put it in red and bigger. Using mobile phone, a smart home controller is myth that has been busted. It's just nonsense. You won't do it. Maybe if you will introduce new gadget, yeah, it's fun for a week. It's less fun for a month. After a month, it will be just in the corner because you will be tired to find your smartphone all the time. For example, this is why I said I introduced that screen because as I see, uh, say, that really true easy of use is just by various buttons, controls, switches that are scattered around in your apartment and uh, yeah, you do it uh, all the time. And because of that I have that screen just to see temperature outside without trying to find my phone. So see, always on screen, screen stuck to the wall and I know the temperature is always there. And yeah, you can still use phone, tablet as I mentioned in that video but for, for some clear cases. Uh, is it to go open or security? Sometimes manufacturers claim that it's impossible in open way to do it in secure way. It's bullshit. 
that it can be done if you understand what you are uh, if you understand what you are doing. Uh, the second thing, how I'm approaching this, that just what could happen if something goes wrong. Let's say I'm using Chinese cloud and some lock on my door. What could go wrong? Yes. Uh, you just uh, believe that those Chinese have just full access to your home. That's it. And uh, think what you would do in case they will arrive and go inside. Uh, yep, I see some lights. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, there are some notes about how those networks can be actually secured. And <laughs> in Latvian it sounds better that I smakoņe mir saule. Uh, it's about clouds, so actually everything is pushing you to the clouds, to the same home systems doing the same. But you can build home by holding all your data there in your home internally and just owning all of those data and those are your data and that's your smart home. And uh, at the beginning it's hard to talk about smart home not mentioning matter. I assume everyone has heard about it and uh, it's promise. Uh, I'm very skeptical, as I wrote, uh, that it will just come and solve all those issues that were there addressed in this talk. Uh, they claim that it will be addressed, addressed but uh, as an example I copied this, some quotes from IKEA webpage, you can go check in this link that they are actually there, I'm not lying. And this new IKEA diriger, diriger, I have no clue how it's spelled. Uh, they claim that they have matter support, so what's matter? Yes, it's nice, we are working 200 companies, we, at IKEA we are... Can I use it for another brand? No, you will use Hub, Smart App and integration to Google Home. <coughs> but yes. what ChatGPT says about it? No clue, <laughs> have not asked. <laughs> and this is, yeah, uh, in this case I really hope that I'm wrong here that uh, matter really will come and solve because yeah, this zoo and this jungle out there must be fixed. Otherwise I currently see matter as just a replacement for those three icons that will stay and that this integration with let's say the Google or Alexa will just change <coughs> protocol from proprietary to matter. That's it currently. Unfortunately I do not see any kind of open source options how to use this one. So that's it. Thanks, and now it's a... Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Let's start from one uh, Thank you for your talk. Uh, have you considered sensors based on more network, long range of network? Have not tried, but I know this network from kind of from uh, professional life. Yeah. Uh, we are not really using those. We are uh, professional, we are focusing on narrow band, uh, but I know those, but I have not played with them. Because it's just uh, one apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah might be more for, for buildings. Yep. Okay, thank you. <coughs> what about out of home usage? Uh, I can show you later on phone. It's working, as I said. Uh, Some VPNs? No, uh, it's more complicated. It's reverse proxy on the real server with real address, dual DNS inside, outside, and it works. <laughs> but as I said, it's not really... But it's working for, okay. It's working okay. First of all, uh, regarding this last question, uh, you can uh, look to uh, Cloud Player Zero Trust. Uh, I use the service, and it's my question <laughs> about another uh, them. Um, do you have experience uh, with running a uh, home assistant in uh, high mobility mode, maybe using Postgres scale for like and database storage? Uh, I'm using for database MariaDB. So it's already outside in CQL, but uh, no, in this uh, anymore, just regular installation with regular MariaDB for box or for all for data? data? For all data. For all data. And from that I uh, know that this usage is very wrong, just because I saw in before the upgrades that if you get some graph with history, it just 100 CPU for several times. I don't know what they're doing, but it's definitely wrong. Can you integrate light bulbs with conventional on-off switches or you have to use the special smart ones? Uh, you can. Some of those, let's say, those son of uh, smart switches has kind of output where you connect regular switch and then, you, for example, regular switch you can switch it off and from phone switch it back on. It can be done. There are devices to do that. More? Oh, 
uh, about this uh, water meter you have in plants yep. so integrated in your system. So, but the idea is that you like uh, make a photograph of this or photograph. Have you consider just using gimbal's meter? Um, I can think about any meter, but those meters are unfortunately owned by RNP kind of com utility company. I can't use any meter. I no, need but it's a rules meter. Like uh, it spins, you get one impulse, you uh, send it to your hub, and then you know that that amount of water. Uh, ah, whatever. about that one. I uh, have not tried. I know those kind of technologies also, as I mentioned, from professional life, uh, but it's known that they are very. Uh, not precise, how to say, uh, but from other hand, uh, yeah, maybe it, it can be done if it's isn't needed, but like I have not tried it. Isn't like impulse only for electricity? No, it's like impulse meter, you just, you can, it spins, it still has this magnetic, Yeah, you can, it spins for electricity, for electricity. water, yes. and for any. What would you say is your most useful IoT device or automation? Automation most uh, useful is or the that, uh, shown that for gas heating because uh, yeah I don't know why Latvian those supporters of gas heating boilers are I won't say word here in loud uh, but they do not understand that this device nowadays runs on firmware it's a CPU updates and so on and it's when it hangs it's clearly this was firmware bug Bosch says in, I have this uh, Bosch heating. They say, oh, yeah, you can update firmware in UI that shows firmware version, but when I go to company, huh, firmware? No, we can just change the whole electricity. This is electronics for your boiler. And what firmware will be there? Who knows? Uh, have you tried to measure how much, uh, for example, money you have saved up since installing software? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> negative. <laughs> Because it's still uh, being kind of research, kind of first uh, saving uh, is the idea of these Shelly meters. Uh, when I'm now mentoring electricity, later I will add those. When I will uh, finish that water and gas measurements, maybe that will draw some conclusions how to optimize something. But currently, it's just negative it's spending. <laughs> how, how do you build uh, your programs uh, with Raspberry Pi? I saw there was a mention that it is difficult to compile it. Raspberry Pi itself. Why do you compile it on Raspberry Pi, the programs? Why not compile it outside on your source machine and it's hard. compile it to the target? It's hard, because it's hard. Let's say that Node.js, uh, uh, Zigbee template today, for example, is using Node.js uh, with that native, uh, how it was called, native module that uh, it's still kind in JavaScript, but when you attempt it, it builds to native code and it needs to be done on the same CPU architecture that will be running later. Use MacBook. Uh, I'm not sure, is it really the same ARM that's in Raspberry? Same technology, okay. <laughs> it's not, but it's same architecture. So MacBook uses uh, actually software from Raspberry Pi. Without, without Raspberry, Apple would not make it. <laughs> <laughs> Sad truth. <laughs> okay, Mark? Any opinions on the LMP Alpha? Uh, yes, but we can talk in private. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about HomeKit and have you tried it? No, normal standard HomeKit. Uh, in private I can tell what I think about I, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> that will explain uh, other <laughs> comments. Okay. As you as you saw, kind from comments, I'm about openness. About openness. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we have too many unstandard things uh, which you can be done without this many hacks and this, yeah. and this philosoph just, just philosophy. Just working without problems, without hanging and not need any... Yeah, but it's closed. Yeah, of course. Have you considered to track and read information from fitness bands and braces because they are Bluetooth low energy and therefore they should broadcast all the data? Uh, it's not so simple, those are not really broadcasting, those are not advertising packets, maybe there are for discovery purpose, but uh, actually data is being read, uh, read via that uh, attributes, and yeah. the data and attributes, if they kind of open, then you can read it, if it's encrypted with proprietary technologies, you can't do it. Okay. okay. Uh, what is your application for e screens? Uh, you promised to tell. Uh, it's, uh, 
application you make, how I'm using it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's on wall showing temperatures, kind of upcoming events from calendar and so on. Uh, it's just info screen of the uh, type, type, type of tablet? No, it's saying. And for paper. Ah, it's it's ready it's device, what I found. Yeah. It's technically a space 32 with the ink, you can build it yourself. I'm thinking about building it larger because it's, I think, 7 inches. Uh, larger, of course, is more, but uh, there are no kind of ready to use you can buy. And as I mentioned, time is very, very limited, and I would prefer if someone makes this larger, let's say 10 inches, I would just buy it. Currently, I have not found it. So, not a question, but uh, something like uh, to summarize. Uh, you mentioned that first devices come come from 2006, like right. So today is 2023, and we are still in do-it-yourself phase. So, just because uh, this is, as I show in the second uh, slide, is the jungle. Everyone is just pulling this kind of ecosystem in their own direction, they are better, oh, there are, as I said, 10 protocols, let's introduce 11, oh, they are bad, let's introduce 12. And uh, they are not talking to each other, they think that, oh, manufacturer, uh, every user must have 10 applications, therefore. And this is matter what is claiming to fix. If, we, if it will work, time only will tell. In result, uh, for example, uh, uh, I am, uh, as a consumer, like a step away from these devices because I don't know what to do. Okay, one button, okay, two buttons, but more yep. complex uh, for me is not interesting. But unfortunately, sure. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I lost something, but uh, I was saying that you can uh, compile uh, code from the whole system, from the desktop to the mobile device. Uh, because a uh, CPU is another architecture. Yes, correct. But uh, that's not just this called uh, cross compiling. Uh, it's just a binary results. Yeah, but for me it's easier just to leave it running, building, let's say, for several hours, maybe sometimes kill it, restart, uh, than to set up this cross compiling. So you are not saying that you can't build. Uh, no, I'm saying that I did not uh, do it. Uh, chocolate, you didn't say dark or milk, so there will be dark and uh, nine grains bandanas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.